Well, welcome back to the build. Um, just talked to everybody yesterday. At the recommendation of somebody off of YouTube made the comment to shoot this thing in landscape mode. So I'm gonna give that a go. Hopefully I can keep everything kind of in frame. Um, so we'll try that, see how it works. So gonna give everybody an update on the build. Uh, and this is what we have got. So I got the floorboard cut and it's kind of temporarily in, not fully in yet. I'm gonna do a little bit more trimming and I gotta find a place for the steering um, cable to, or the steering um, to come up out of there. I got the seats just temporarily located, but that was important because that was gonna locate my steering and everything else from there. So steering wheel is in, the helm is back in there. The start switch, stop switch, and the reverse lever over there and the dash cluster are all in. So that is pretty good progress. So happy with that. I'm gonna talk really quick about this uh, Triple S uh, reverse lever. It's, it, they're, these are pretty sweet, no doubt about it, but on the 3.3 the, the kit, this gunnel is a little bit shorter than the Skookum and I think it might be also a little bit narrower here. So there wasn't very much room in here I'll try to swip the phone around here to see if you can see that I had to cut out to make room for the lever and for the actual cable itself back there. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that. So um, that's that. Uh, worked pretty sweet. The other thing is it comes with a faceplate that's supposed to go on there, but because this thing is so much narrow, it just didn't look like. So I just uh, countersunk these and and I think it actually looks pretty pretty good. I actually like it a lot. It's very clean. Um, that steering wheel is in and the gauge cluster is in. This is actual uh, carbon fiber plate that I had or sheet that I had uh, laid up for some race parts that I made out of. And then just a little L bracket. Um, Turned out pretty sweet. I kind of came up with a little three lump design. I was gonna originally try to fill this whole area, but it just started to look too big and boxy. I didn't really like that. Um, really quick about this carbon fiber. Here's just a little piece of it. It's actually eighth inch thick. I'm not, I can't remember how many layers of carbon fiber on here, but this thing is flipping strong. You could, you could probably drive a truck over this uh, little dash cluster. Um, just because you get strength out and, and stiffness out of carbon fiber when you have multiple layers. So um, you can't, it's not just one or two layers, doesn't make it strong. It's multiple layers. It's the epoxy resin that's in there and uh, vacuum sealed to get all the air out of it is what makes this stuff strong. So pretty cool little, uh, little side note on the dash cluster. The only other things that I got to do is um, the little warning horn and the steering uh, position sensor get plugged in over there and then it's off to the races. So today my goal is to get the steering thumb or finger throttle built in. The Honda, it actually has the throttle body back here on the, uh, the engine. So I have to build a throttle cable that runs all the way up. Um, so I'm going to route that from here up to the midship, out, then up the gunnel, and over to the throttle. Um, that's a little bit different than the Yamaha because it had the remote, uh, I don't even know what you call it. It's not a throttle body, but like a throttle position. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, that's my goal for the day. Real quick side note on yesterday's video about the cost of, of building these things. I didn't mean to discourage anybody from getting into one of these kits or boats, that wasn't my intention. It was to show transparency and so you're prepared to, to kind of um, know what's the cost of actually finishing one of these kits. That's not to say that you couldn't build a boat for 3,000 bucks. It can be done. Um, I'm gonna probably try to do a single seat out of a old Sea-Doo 581 that's sitting out in my yard from my buddy. And I think I can do that for two to 3,000 bucks. And I'm actually just gonna give it to him because he's the one that gave me the Kawasaki. So kind of a, a little barter system. So can you do it? Yes. Is it gonna be 270 horsepower? Absolutely not. It's gonna be something like a, uh, you know, a 650 or a 500 or something like that. So like I said yesterday, horsepower is money. And the more horsepower you want, the more it costs you. That's, there's no way around that. Um, there's a, I mean, the real, the reality of it is aluminum. Like I said, aluminum is three bucks a pound, two eighty to three bucks a pound. 
your UHMW, that's, those are set amounts of, of a cost. So yeah, you could build one. It may not have UHMW on the bottom. It may have 100 or 90 horsepower. I don't, that's not my gig. I want, um, uh, I want the 270 to 300 horsepower. I think that's plenty. Somebody posted, hey, what's the, the smallest power plant that I could do one of these out of? I only want to go 35 miles an hour. And I agree with the speed. I say probably 90% of the time that I'm driving that, that SHO, I'm in the 30 to 40 mile an hour range because I'm reading the water, I'm looking for rocks, looking at logs, picking my line, all that kind of stuff. I don't cruise around at 60 mile an hour pinned for an hour and a half. That's not what I do. So um, yeah, those are good speeds. But with that horsepower or lack of, that also affects your steering. Uh, in a jet boat. It's essentially vectored thrust, right? You're, you're accelerating water, you're redirecting it in a different direction to get the boat to turn. That's how sprint boats turn so damn hard, is that I've got 1200 horsepower twin turbo and a nine inch pump, and that thing throws some water. That's how they turn so hard. Um, so you're not going to move that much water with a with a 500 cc two stroke or whatever so it, i i really like that little kawasaki 1100 but it just didn't have the thrill factor that i wanted it didn't have the instant kind of point and accelerate that i wanted i don't need to go honestly 60 i don't need to go 70 or 80 in one of these boats i do that in my race boat but i want a playful boat that will point and turn and be able to, uh, you know, kind of get me out of trouble if I need it. Uh, hopefully not get me into trouble, but that could be the case if you're carrying too much speed. Anyway, starting to ramble. I will wrap this up. I got to get to work on that throttle cable. Thanks for watching. Hit that share button. Hit that bell for notifications, and we'll see you probably tomorrow. I'll give you an update. Hopefully the throttle will be complete.